morning. Good morning. Morning, Charles and Frida. I don't know that profile picture. Um, it's the guessing game again, isn't it? Um, morning, Mary and Lee. Morning, Claire. Happy Friday, people. Morning, Louisa. Nice to see your faces coming in. Morning, Frida. Oh, you're on two devices today. <laughs> okay. Just wait a few minutes while people are logging in. Morning, Janine. Morning, Matt. Morning, Matt. <laughs> morning. Morning, morning. I haven't got Yorkshire tea this morning. I have coffee because I've been up for hours. <laughs> and I'm needing some extra coffee and an extra boost. Good morning, Claire. I hope you're all well and if you have been um, trying to work out who's on devotions every morning there's been a bit of a we got into a bit of a pattern now so Luke's does Monday I do Tuesday usually Andy Wednesday testimony Thursday and it should be Terence on a Friday but he's flown off isn't he on a sunbed somewhere so <laughs> So I have um, picked his one up. I'm sure he would have loved to have done devotions with you this morning, but it's me. <laughs> Good morning, Joan. Yeah, Janine, Aunt Matt's saying Auntie Leah because of Philippa. I'm soon to be another auntie. That's why. Big fan of Philippa, aren't you, Matt? <laughs> Okay, so we're going to be reading Proverbs 20 today. If you want to, whilst I'm stalling, <laughs> um, try to get your Bibles out. Turn to Proverbs 20. Morning, Mavis. Um, Proverbs 20. And I'm going to be skipping around that whole chapter. I'm not going to read it all. Just going to flip about a bit. <laughs> and it will make sense, hopefully, um, as we go through that. But, um, yeah, we're on Proverbs 20. I hope you enjoyed Terence, uh, Terence, Testimony Thursday yesterday with Andrew Jenkinson. Why don't you watch that and give it a share? Um, and we'll see you again on Sunday where we'll be hosting again from church and an excitement, exciting announcement will be made on Sunday. Um, so tune in for that. Morning, Miranda. Okay, let's get going, shall we? And then uh, you can enjoy the rest of your day. Not that you won't enjoy this, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Okay, so we're reading in Proverbs 20. And this whole chapter is uh, basically, sums up, in, a, in a nutshell, it's about living a life of example. Living by example and how we live our lives um, affects others, how it affects others, how it affects ourselves, um, how we look to others um, for an example. Others look to you as an example. This happens, you know, doesn't it, whether we like it or not. We're all an example to somebody, whether it's our children, our friends, our colleagues. Um, we're always an example to somebody. And uh, I want to, as a parent, pick up on that, that, you know, it's a prime example of um of that is parents and children that relationship it's inevitable that we all pick up um the same mannerisms as each other uh, when you live with someone for a long time you you rub off on each other don't you and uh, you know reuben is more and more day by day becoming more like luke in his sense of humor it's not good people because <laughs> i had luke to begin with and now i'm getting ganged up on with reuben and his lovely sense of humor and um yeah it's not good unfortunately and i remember i was with standing with uh, sarah um my sister-in-law in the playground once and we were just chatting waiting for the kids to come out of school 
And I remember she'd said something to me and I reacted, whatever I, facial expression, I reacted and uh, she went, oh, you're just like your mother. I don't know if that was a good thing or not. Um, but yeah, we, you know, the more times that we spend time with each other, we rub off on each other, don't we? And um, yeah, so let's read, let's read verse seven to begin with. The righteous man leads a blameless life. Blessed are his children after him. As, as parents, we've said, we, you know, we're all examples. Um, why is my computer not doing that? There we go. Parents who live, who live, you know, live with integrity, bring, it's, that's what it's saying, living by integrity, bring great blessing to our children. Now, Billy Graham said, this is a quote, integrity is the glue that holds our way of life together. We must constantly strive to keep our integrity intact. When wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. But when character is lost, all is lost. Scary, right? Integrity is living a life that is honest um, and having strong morals and principles to live by. When I'm reminded in Lot, in the story of Lot in the Bible, he lost his family, his livelihood um, and his health. And we read that, you know, his wife said, just give up on your integrity, just curse God and die. <laughs> but he rebuked her um, by remembering all the good things that God had given him. The most two important concepts of integrity is honesty and truth. And I more and more, I'm believing that that is something fundamental that we have to have um, within our character. We, to cultivate that in our lives, to make them a part of who we are. Um, that is living by example, is it? What a good example that is to people. Um, yeah, so read verse five. Let's go back to verse five. I know we just read seven, but like I said, I'm jumping. <laughs> verse five, the purposes of a man's heart are deep waters, but a man of understanding draws them out. So this is another area in which we can be a good example by, um, it says by drawing um, our thoughts and ideas out of deep waters. Now in normal circumstances, you know, in our life groups, um, they're set up normally <laughs> when we meet together, uh, we discuss topics, we, we get around something and, and we draw out what we think about a subject. We draw out those thoughts, those opinions, um, those things that we think are, you know, principles and we discuss them. And um, it's an, a skill, actually, if we've got a good life group leader, our life group leaders are amazing. Um, but the skill is to draw out, um, to ask the right questions and draw out um, our opinions and thoughts about what we actually think. And it's really good to actually question, do I really think about, what do I think about that? Um, and to go away and, and come up with your own thoughts and opinions about that. You know, growing up, I've, you know, you, you get on, uh, you take on other your parents opinions of things um morning pat um you, you you take on those thoughts and those opinions don't you instead of actually do i really believe that do i you know do i actually do i live by that and it's really good to question yourself and research yourself and draw out um your own opinions and, and conclude that together i hate doing q a you know if there's any like um question panel that we have to do or anything. I hate it. I hate being put on the spot to, um, cause uh, you know, I'm, one of the things I fear is like, I'm not saying the right thing or maybe it's not perfect. <laughs> I like to go away and, and, um, and research and come up with my own opinions. And, and, um, yeah, that's just the way I am. Uh, it's just one little fault of mine. And so they're just, just go for it. Whatever's in you is going to come out. Right. So uh, I just get a bit fearful of that, but I just don't like it. I probably overthink it, but I would encourage you next time when you life group meets again or when you're with friends or with whatever you're doing, do you know, let's let's go deeper in our conversations. Let's draw out stuff that's within us to to bounce ideas off each other, to um, explore our opinions and what we think about st the Bible and whatever in life. Um, let, let's let's draw out like it says, draw out from the, the deep. Right. Let's go to verse 15. Um, gold there is and rubies in abundance but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel you know it is wise to listen to the advice of others that's what it's saying here 
um, we become more wiser and we become more knowledgeable in those things when we we're as, when we're, we're walking with wise people. Um, and if you need help in making the right choices, making good decisions, then in verse 18 it says, make plans by seeking advice. If you wage war, obtain guidance. Blatant, obvious, that's what you have to do. Seek help. Let's make good, important decisions with people who are wiser than us. Not necessarily the people who, you know, what what you want to hear, you, know, you go to those, but those people who will actually... Um, uh, you know, speak wise counsel to you, so stuff that will challenge you um, to think otherwise on, and to make those important decisions. It's so important. Um, but be careful who you talk to. Be careful who you talk to because in verse 19, it says, it goes on to say, a gossip betrays a confidence. So avoid a man who talks too much. It tells us to be careful of gossip. So when we go and ask and seek for advice, go to those people who are wise, not people who would gossip about you. Um, you know, it's, it's horrible, isn't it? If you've been on that, that receiving end of people gossiping about you, you feel betrayed, you feel hurt, you feel all those feelings that come with it. Um, I choose my friends very carefully. Um, and it's really not nice, is it, being that victim? Uh, you obviously feel hurt and betrayed by all that um, within you. Wants to get back at them. <laughs> you want revenge, right? You want another piece of advice, though. In, in verse 22, it says, Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. And I want to just land here for a minute about that whole topic of revenge. It's horrible. And... Um, I've, in my Bible here, I've got this women's Bible. It's the NIV. And throughout the Bible, it um, gives you little um, excerpts or little stories that goes along with the verses. And to be honest, I just read, it just jumped out at me this morning. And I'd like to read that with you because it explains about revenge really, really well. So bear with me while I read this, but it's really good. Revenge isn't sweet. Instead, it makes us sour. Studies have shown an association between negative emotions such as anger and revenge with a variety of destructive physical symptoms including headaches, backaches, allergic disorders, ulcers, nausea, high blood pressure and heart attacks. Sadly, while vengeful people plot another's demise, they themselves often develop a painful health problem. Paybacks have a way of paying us back. Now, don't worry if you've all got those symptoms. I'm not saying that you all are, uh, want revenge for something, but it's, a, it, it's, it's the studies have shown that that's what um, that's what's shown. Revenge is an outward manifestation of an underlying problem, anger. Anger left unchecked will deepen into bitter roots of resentment or jealousy. And when these unbiblical attitudes are full grown, the desire of revenge springs up. Revenge opposes the golden rule. Do to others what you would have them do to you. Matthew 7, 12. Instead of taking things into your own hands, this proverb encourages us to let go and let God deal with our enemies because God is just. Those who are wicked will eventually get their just desserts. Bear with me, nearly done. Louis the Twelfth. And I had to look that up because I forgot how to read new Roman numerals. I know, mm -hmm. just went out my brain. I'm like, oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> how did how did that? Anyway, googled it. Great. Louis the Twelfth of France said to have treated his enemies in an unexpected manner after ascending to the throne. Before coming to power, he had been cast into prison and kept in chains. Later. When he did become king, he was urged to seek revenge on those who had opposed him, but he refused. Instead, he prepared a scroll on which he listed all who had perpetrated crimes against him. Behind every man's name, he placed a cross in red ink. When the guilty heard about this, they feared for their lives and fled. Then the king said, he explained, the cross which I drew beside each name was not a sign of punishment, but a pledge of forgiveness extended for the sake of the crucified saviour who upon his cross forgave his enemies and prayed for them. Getting revenge may get us even with our enemies, but forgiveness places us above them. In fact, we are never more like God than when we turn the other cheek. In the Lord's Prayer, the only petition that is conditional is 
forgiveness. Matthew 6, 12 says, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Why can we forgo revenge and offer uh, forgiveness? Because we have been forgiven by God, right? To issue payback is human, but to pardon is divine. Isn't that great? I just loved that. When I read that, um, it just explains revenge really well. You know, we have to go above. It's divine, isn't it? It does not, it's not um, in the world sense, it's not what you should do. You should pay back. Yes, I want justification for what happened to me. You know, you, naturally, that's how we think, isn't it? But we are above that, aren't we? we, we we're above that and we need to show forgiveness um, for those people who are against us, for those people who, um, you know, have gossiped about us, who have betrayed us, who we feel hurt by. And that is summing it all up is a it's about living a life of example being example to others to live a higher calling to live a higher um life and to live the the life that god has called us to be and we want to be more like jesus don't we so even though we might want to take revenge this verse tells us not to and it says we must wait for god because he's the one who settles the score it might not be instant but it happens. I've been, I've, I've witnessed to that a lot of times. So just to sum it all up, my time's up, just to reflect upon what are some of the things that God um, has forgiven you from, right? Just have a little think of those things that God has forgiven. You've got a big list, right? <laughs> but just by thinking about those things, how does that help you um, to let go of revenge to, and just to let God handle the situation? and handle all your paybacks. What an example we can be um, to live our lives like that. Uh, reflecting from the earlier passages that we read about integrity, living a life that's honest and truth. How can we do that more in our day-to-day -day life? Um, ask God to help us to live that, uh, to live a life that demonstrates integrity and faithfulness, to seek wise counsel, when we um, need advice in those times where we're not uncertain, even though, you know, you're talking to God, you've got the Holy Spirit with you as your guide and you're talking it through, but you just need that extra bit of wisdom from somebody. Go to that, those people who are wise counsel um, and not to entertain gossips that will talk about it. Allow God to settle our paybacks, right? Let me just pray for you and then you can get on with your day. Father, I pray for anybody here who, um, who you know, is just thinking and reflecting about what has been spoken this morning, whether um, it is about revenge. <laughs> Lord, I just pray that you'll help them to um, to forgive. And it says in your word that we should love our enemies. It, should, it says we should pray for our enemies. And Lord, I just pray that you'll help us to give, um, help our spirits. Lord, I just pray that you'll help us to forgive, make those simple steps towards forgiveness. Lord, I pray, Lord, that anybody who feels hurt or betrayed, Lord, that you will come and heal those in need in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to be, be people of integrity, people who are honest, people who are truthful. Lord, and help us to be an example of you and show you, Lord, in our day-to-day -day lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Amen. So enjoy your rest of your Friday. Uh, we'll see you again on Sunday, 11 a.m. Big announcement. Stay tuned. Get tuned in 11 a.m. And Kids Church is also back this week. So get your kids devices, battery charged, the lot ready for 11 a.m. Okay. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Have a great day.